You guys talk a, a, a little bit about, and I've seen, um, you know, you've shared with me some some thoughts for the book, and I've seen some some early pieces of the book. You talk about the nine core characteristics that make up, you know, a high potential candidate. Can you do you mind talking about that a little bit? I don't know how much you want to share before the book comes out, but what I what I really um, found interesting about what you sent me and what I agree with is is identifying high potential candidates that may not be a perfect fit on paper maybe they don't check every single box on paper for the job requirement mm -hmm. but they have a shit ton of of potential <laughs> and and this person could probably end up being a c-level person if you would just you know bring them into your organization I realize that they may not have sold coffee tables but they sold a lot of other things by the way and they really show a lot of other potential can you talk about that because just as a you know because writer flex is a recruiting firm too and i gotta tell you if if you ask me to line up uh, or if you ask me to list the things that drive me the most nuts about clients it's it's when a client says yeah but I noticed that they haven't sold purple coffee tables and I really need a candidate that sold purple. I just, that just drives me nuts. And, and I know you talk about this in the book. So just, can you go into that a little bit? <laughs> it's Mike's pet peeve. I'm gonna let Mike tee off on that because so, it, 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 it drives him nuts. I think you've seen this is, those clients that say, well, they haven't sold those purple tables. It is we're over specializing the, the market. Is, and there's a lot of risk with that. The reason uh, these special operations leaders and military leaders um, are so adaptable is because they are the perfect general managers right. when you think about it. They draw from such a broad range of experiences that you throw a problem in front of them, they will solve it much quicker than somebody that has a very niche specialization. I mean. One deployment, they're in Iraq. The next deployment, they're in Afghanistan. The, the deployment after that, they're in uh, East Somalia. A and they had to adapt to each of those environments, very different uh, cultures, very different problem sets. And that's why they're so adaptable in the uh, space. So we did, and, and the funny thing is we came up with nine foundational characteristics. The funny story behind this is it became very heated uh, amongst uh, mm -hmm. uh, George, myself, and we had a main uh, contributor a uh, guy named Dr. Josh Cotton, who's an organizational uh, psychologist. Funny enough, he actually worked with the Navy SEALs and Green Berets assessing their assessment and selection process. That's what special operations calls it, assessment okay. and selection. That is the hiring process for the business world. And so they brought in this organizational psychologist, uh, Dr. Cotton, to improve how they hire. And now he works for uh, Honeywell uh, within their uh, talent acquisition uh, arm. But I think our initial list was like 30 core attributes. And then people to agree and combine certain uh, attributes was very difficult. And I, honestly, I think that conversation went on for probably three or four months until we said, hey, we got to get this down to something that's, that's manageable. Yeah. And we actually thought we had to get it lower than, uh, than nine. Each special operations community has a core set of attributes they look for. And, and these nine really are a uh, aggregate uh, you know, collection of those. We, we had to rename some, uh, you know, what the MARSOC community, which are these special operations soldiers within the Marine Corps, awesome, um, are slightly different than what the SEALs look for. Okay. But generally, they're all the same. I'll, I'll list them off real quick. They are drive, resiliency, adaptability, humility, which is key, uh, integrity, effective intelligence, what we call team ability, which is teamwork, uh, curiosity, and uh, of course, emotional strength. And, and we're happy to go into a, a, you know, a few of those, it, 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 but here's the bottom line, and George will, will, will mirror this as well. No one person is gonna have these nine uh, core attributes. So companies may take this book and, and say, we need to find people with these nine uh, core attributes. One, what we explain in the book is that each job requires a set of attributes and it's probably about three to five that you're looking for. Yeah, you know, and ultimately a good hire only may possess two of those core attributes at a very high level, vice all five, or verse all five. So um, additionally, we've found that 
these are the attributes that if you take high performers in any industry, regardless of their domain expertise, they all, for, for better or less, have a lot of these, uh, these core attributes. The RiderFlex podcast features entrepreneurs, business executives, and the stories behind how they got there, as well as daily tips on career advice and job interviews. Our show can be heard just about anywhere these days, but you can visit riderflex.com and click on the podcast page to hear all the previous episodes and learn more about the recruiting and consulting services we provide. Contact us at the email address info at riderflex.com or 888-964-5876. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoy our show, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes.